Hello, my YouTube friends. Today's video is sponsored by Owned, but I'm gonna tell you about that more later. You're here because you're experiencing drop frames in your live streams. This is a common problem, especially for new streamers. When you're just learning, it's really hard to know where to look to figure out what's causing the problem. So today I'm gonna tell you the five things that you should check first if your streams are dropping frames. So you know what? Let's get to it. Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing and hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and it really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. The first thing you need to check is the stats window while you're live streaming. So while you're live streaming, you go into OBS, you go to view, and then you're going to go to stats. And it's bringing up this stats window right here. You can see I brought this up while I was live streaming. And it shows you the CPU usage that you have over here on the left in the top pane. You have your frames per second, the average amount of time it takes to render a frame. And then you have your render and your encoding lag. And this is going to be shown by frames drop. In this case, I had 21 frames drop from render lag and zero frames drop from encoding lag. If this is bad for you, one of these will be in red. In the lower pane, you can see that this is the actual health of the stream from a network perspective. I have zero dropped frames and you can see my bit rate over there on the right hand side. That's the 6,000 that I use plus whatever the bit rate is for the audio. So just keep in mind that the audio is generally added to the 6,000 bit rate on your video. So it's not unusual for your bit rate to be a touch over 6,000 or whatever bit rate you have set because that bit rate doesn't actually include the audio. Audio. And once again, if I was having problems or difficulties with my upload speed, this would be red and we'd be dropping a lot of frames. So this is the first thing you want to check and you want to do it while you're live streaming. That's the only thing that's going to give you the information that you need to go to the next step. Now we know which process is causing our dropped frames. And if no dropped frames showed up in the stats window, then it could be a matter of how you're sending the signal to the streaming service. So if your stats look good, the next thing you need Need to check is the proper settings for your streaming service. First, before you check your streaming service settings, are you streaming on Wi-Fi? If so, then you can stop troubleshooting right here. Plug your machine in and try again. Wi-Fi is great for surfing the web and watching movies on your iPad, but it's not for live streaming. Here is the YouTube streaming service page and it basically has all the information that we need to set up our stream so it will properly run on YouTube. If we go down here to 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second, it lists the resolution and the video bit rate that we should have. And the same thing for 1080 at 30 frames per second. Then when we go down here, we can see our encoding settings, what it's expecting from a video codec perspective, how many keyframes we should have, the audio codec, the bit rate encoding, CB are. These are things that you can check and set in your OBS so that you can make sure that you're streaming the way that YouTube wants to receive it. And if you do that, you're going to get much better results on their end without dropped frames. The same thing goes for Twitch. It's right here. This actually has specs for NVIDIA encoder and the X264 encoder. Each one of these has the kind of settings that you're going to find right in OBS so you can set it up properly. You have your preset as quality. It gives you your B frames, it gives you your bit rate, everything that you could possibly need on both NVIC and X264. So if you set your settings up right, you shouldn't be dropping any frames at all when you stream to Twitch. And Facebook is no different. It gives you all the information on this page right here. All three of these pages are linked in the description so you can check them out. And they're going to give you all the information that you need to stream at the resolution that you're streaming at. You can see here we've got the CBR encoder. It tells you you need to be in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It wants H.264. The common standard stuff. And most of your settings are already set up this way, but maybe they're not. Maybe your bit rate is too high. If you're streaming at a bit rate that's too high, these encoders that are on the service side are going to have to re-encode your stream. In which case, you don't know what you're going to get. If you stream it at the proper bit rate right out of OBS, your results are going to be much better. 
Owned is a website that offers anything a Twitch streamer could possibly want. On Owned.tv, there are thousands of overlay packs with alerts and stingers built in, as well as emotes and badges, and like I said, just about everything you could want. But what really excites me is the Own Pro site. On Own Pro, you download a plugin for OBS, and in OBS, you can browse and select from thousands of overlay packs that download and are set up completely right out of the gate in OBS. You can add a alerts and labels and modify the text and even create custom layouts in just a few minutes. And they all have custom stingers that are set up with the profile so you don't have to do anything. You just download them and they're ready to go. In just a few minutes, you're gonna have a professional stream that looks like you spent a million bucks. The best part is for just a few bucks a month, and I mean less than that crappy Netflix subscription you never use anyways, you're gonna have access to every single one so you could change it up on every stream in just a few minutes if you really wanted to. So take a second and check out Own TV and Own Pro. Down below there are links in the description for each one. If you have the means to support the sponsors that support this channel, it goes a long way towards helping me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks! Now let's get back to those dropped frames. More than likely your problem did show up in the stats window. So the next issue is encoding or rendering frames lost in the stats window. And and while this is two separate things, the contributing factors are generally exactly the same. The third thing you should check is your encoding settings. So we need to go into our settings window, then we're gonna start on the output section of the settings window. And here we wanna verify that we have the proper encoder selected. If you have an NVIDIA encoder, it should be NVENC. If you don't, it's probably X264. We wanna make sure the rate control is the same as it was in our stream settings for the application that we're streaming to, whether it's YouTube, Twitch, or Facebook. I think all three of them are CBR, so just make sure it's CBR. Next, we want to check our bit rate and make sure that it falls into the acceptable range listed for the resolution that we want to stream at. Now, if you are getting all kinds of problems in the encoding section, this is where you can downgrade your encoding a little bit. If you notice, most of the streaming services had ranges for the actual resolution that you want to stream at, so you can try your bit rate at the lower end of that and see if it fixes your problem. Then you have your preset and all that stuff, which was listed on the Twitch one, and your B frames and your keyframes are both here as well. You wanna check out all these settings. If we flip over to X264, it's a little different. You're still gonna set your rate control and your bit rate properly, and you have your keyframes down here that you can set as well. Then when we go to the CPU usage preset, well, we found this on Twitch as well, and you wanna set it to the appropriate level for that. If you're streaming to YouTube or Facebook, Book, which don't list the preset that they like, that's okay. Just test this to see what's going to work for you. You may have to do some test streams in order to get the best results. Next, we just wanna flip over quick to the audio section and make sure that we have a sample rate chosen and we'll flip right over into the video section. Just make sure that this is actually the resolution that you plan to stream at in both your base and output resolutions and drop your frame rate here just to verify that it is what you plan to stream at, whether it's 30 or 60. Basically, you wanna verify that you're streaming a signal that the service actually wants. And of course, we know what that is because we checked those pages. And if you do that, it's definitely time to retest your stream and see if you have better results. The other piece of the stats window is the stream health. And if it's where you're dropping frames, that is the next piece we need to take a look at. So for this, you're gonna do a quick search search on Google or whatever your search engine is, you're gonna find an internet speed test and you're gonna fire that puppy off. Now we don't really care about the download speed, it really doesn't matter, because when you're live streaming, you're worried about your upload speed. And so you wanna see what your upload speed is. And this is really important because a lot of people think, oh, I have gig internet. Well, that's great, but if your upload speed is only two megabits per second or something like that, well, you're not, you're not streaming to anything. So once you have your numbers here, here, you can go back into your settings and make sure that these mesh up. So we know what the streaming services expect. Generally speaking, if you're running a bit rate of 6,000 kilobits per second, you're probably good for your live stream.
stream if you're going to any of the three main services. With that being said, your upload speed should be basically double your bit rate. So if I'm uploading at 6,000, I should have a 12 megabit per second upload speed. That's just the way it is. So if you do your upload speed test and it's six megabits per second, that means that the best that you're really going to be able to do reliably is about 3,000 kilobits per second. It is what it is. So your options here are to get better internet connection or possibly move on to the next step and let's see if we can optimize your stream. Now we've arrived at the hard truth. If the fixes in the first four things didn't put you on track, it's likely your equipment can't do the kind of stream that you're trying to do. Now that doesn't mean you can't stream, it just means you need to make some optimization changes and maybe a few compromises if new equipment isn't in the cards for you. So now our real options are to go ahead in and resize our stream so that we can actually stream in a proper way. So we're gonna go into settings, we're gonna go into video, and we'll just scale this down to 720. It's okay, we're gonna be all right, even at 720, you can pick 30 or 60 frames per second, whichever you want. If you wanna try 720 at 60, that's fine too. But this is just the first step. There's a lot more we have to do to make this right. So we're gonna open up DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a totally free program. There's a link in the description so you can download it and check it out that is the best way to learn and we're gonna resize all of our assets and when I say assets I mean our overlays any video that we play and all of those sorts of things that you use including your stingers so we'll just create a new project in DaVinci Resolve and we'll call this resize and we're gonna go down here and select the edit pane then what we're gonna do is drag in all of the assets for our live stream that need to be resized into 720 you're probably gonna see something like this that says change your project frame rate or possibly size or something like that um, just click don't change we're gonna set all this anyways we're gonna go up into file we're gonna drop this down and we're going to select project settings and in here we just want to change everything to our frame rate and 720 size so we're gonna switch the frame rate from 24 to 30 or 60 depending upon what you want and then we're gonna go up here and we're gonna select our resolution as this 720 HD 720p and we can set the video format down here to that as well and now all of our video is going to be formatted in 720 so we just drag it down here to our timeline and then we're gonna go ahead and click on this deliver button down here in the bottom right and here we can change our file name up so obviously you're gonna call this whatever it's supposed to be we want to change the location so we know where our new resized assets are going to go and then we have two different options down here so quick time h264 we want to just verify that our resolution is correct and that our frame rate is correct and if this asset does not have any sort of alpha like it's not a stinger or an overlay then you can just go ahead and add that to the render queue if this is a stinger or an overlay then you're gonna want to set the format to QuickTime the codec to uncompressed and your type to BGRA 8-bit and then you want to go down here and select export alpha and of course you're gonna make sure your resolution and frame rate are proper once you have this all set up then you just click add to the render queue and it adds it and it renders it out. The last thing we want to do to optimize all these assets is open up Shutter Encoder. There is a link to this in the description down below. It's totally free. And we're going to turn these files into WebM files that are much smaller and easier for your computer to handle. So we just drag the files in here that we want to re-encode and we're going to drop this down and select VP9. Now, if these are overlay files or stinger files that have alpha, we want to come over here into our advanced features and we want to select enable alpha. You can skip this step if they are just video files or something that does not need to have the alpha preserve. Once we do that, all we have to do is go ahead and click start action. And you can see over here on the right, it creates this WebM file that is way less than half the size of the original. And they are very, very easy for OBS to use. And the quality is not degraded at all. Now all you have to do is go back into OBS and replace the other files with these resized files. And you should be ready to test again. If you follow these five steps, you should be able to find the problems and fix them. And if you want to know more about optimizing your live stream, you should definitely check this video out. Big thanks to the channel sponsors. There are links below in the description so you can check them out. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. 
And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.